Oh, got him. There we go. Hello again, Fishalots. I'm John with Fishing with Johnny Fishalot. And if you clicked on this link, you're interested in some light tackle jigging techniques for some striped bass, or in my case, if you live in the DC area, some rockfish. So make sure you stick around at the end of the episode where I'll share with you some tips and tricks on how you could use some light tackle jigging to catch you more fish and maximize your time out on the water. So stay tuned and let's get into it. And on this trip, I'll be fishing with Captain Joe Tack from Let's Go Fish Guide Services here in Maryland. And Joe is such a nice guy that he actually reviewed a previous episode I released about five reasons why you should continue to winter striper fish even though it's getting cold. And I'll put a link to that video in the description below or at the end of this video at the end card if you want to check that out. And so some of the feedback that he gave me for a next video was some of the information that he wanted his charters to know when walking on his boat for a day of light tackle yeah. fishing. And so a lot of the tips and tricks that you'll hear about in today's video will come compliments. Oh, so much fish of Captain Tack. I'll let you just uh, drop him right in there. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. That's a heavy sucker right there, yep. boy. Chesapeake Bay Striper. Yep, we'll do. And so you just heard the captain say, you know, let's fish on the other side of the boat. And that's because that is where the wind is. So the wind is going to dictate the drift of today's trip. And so if the wind is directly in your face, you know you're on the right side of the boat because your line is going to drift away from the boat and you're going to be able to maintain contact with your lure at all times. And you're also going to be able to maintain contact with the bottom at all times. And with this near bottom strike zone of the striper, that is exactly where you want the lure to be to trigger these bites. Add one. There he goes. See, Joe, more than enough for both. <laughs> oh, he's digging. Look at this guy. These rods are nice. Yeah. These are nice. There we go. I can grab him if you want to keep fishing. Another little guy, off he goes. All right, so let's get into everybody's favorite subject, and that is tackle. So I'll freeze the camera right here. And that first hour that you see is a custom made lure here in Maryland called Bustin' Baits. That is a seven inch shark truce Bustin' Bait. And the next hour that you see here is a seven inch Z Man Jerk Shad, both of which worked extremely well during this trip. And both of those soft plastics are rigged up on GI jig heads and coach jig heads, which both are made in Maryland as well. And hey guys, if you're getting value out of this video, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel and smash that like button so when I post new content, you'll be notified. And I'd love to hear all you fish lots feedback out there. So go ahead and leave me a comment below of what your fondest memory is of jigging, whether you fish for a striped bass or some other species of fish. And all right, fish lots, regardless of what you're using for bait, whether it's soft plastics, what kind of jig heads you're using, the main part or the essential part of this operation in catching fish is A, locating the fish, and then B, presenting your bait in that strike zone so that the fish is likely to eat it. So on this particular day, as you can see right here, these fish were primarily found in about 45 to 50 feet of water along the main channel edge along the drop off. So either as the channel was dropping off or as the channel was coming up. That is where the striper were hanging out during the majority of the day. We had very little bird play on the day. So we pretty much relied on Joe finding these fish along bottom structure and bottom contours. And to Joe's credit, in order to do this, he ran 72 miles in this day. That's right, that's 72 miles to keep us on fish all day long, and that's basically a tuna trip. And the other essential piece of this is not only finding the fish, but then presenting your lure in the strike zone so that you can entice the bite. Now these fish are cold. This is 45 degree weather. These fish are cold and they take a little bit to entice them to bite. And in order to do that, we have to use that slow rolling jigging technique. So we're raising up on the rod tip and we're dropping back very slowly to those fish. And so the trick here is, is when you're deciding on what weight you're gonna use for your 
presentation, whether that's soft plastic or a bucktail or whatever it might be, you want to use a weight that's heavy enough where you're going to be in contact with the bottom at all times in that near bottom strike zone. You also want a weight that's light enough that when you do this slow roll jigging technique, the lure on the descent back down to the bottom is slow enough that it looks very natural and will trigger bites. And here's Joe's thoughts on that exact same process as well. And the, the heavier the, the lure, the easier it is to keep the tension on the line. Yeah. But at some point, it's kind of a little bit of a, if it drops too fast, um, the fish don't, don't bite. When, we, when the wind stops and we're slowing down, we'll Good drop lighter. down in head size. Okay. And there you have it directly from the captain as we strategized on what the wind was doing and how we were going to adjust our jigging presentations with our weight in accordance to the wind either dropping out or picking back up. And you could see those adjustments that we're going to make on the water. That's exactly what we did all day while we were able to have success during an otherwise very tough bite. Littler guy. Oh boy, he golfed that one. I got him, Jeff. Yeah. This is a flipper. Come on up here, buddy. All right. Whew, he got down there. There we go. So, that's good. There we go. Three in a row. <laughs> Oh, whoa, whoa! Look at this guy taking off. He's coming up to the surface. Look at him. Oh, this this striper is going to take me on a tour of the boat. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's dogging me here. Let's see what we got. Well, you wanted to get into a bigger one. Let's see what we got. All right, where are you going, fish? I don't want to get him in your prop there. Yeah, it's a bigger fish. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, this light gear is fun, isn't it? Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's a nicer one. This might be a front camera worthy. Uh, just just bring him over this way all right biggest fish of the day oh nice one that's what we're after huh joe that's it there you go guys there's another one there you go yeah that's it, there it is. i will have a right, link of everything that. we discussed here today in the description or the show notes below. Of All course, right, well, including Captain Joe's one. guide service. What an excellent guy, a local through nice and through. Fish, he knows man. his water's yeah. like the back of his hand, and it was a really hey, enjoyable day to good. fish with him. Now, fortunately, you're supposed to catch that without all these other boats around. 